Hello, welcome to Stand Up Featuring Live. Hello, everyone. Hey, what's hey. happening? Hey, I'm hey. your host, the fabulous, the magnificent, the gorgeous Sydney Washington. You can catch me all up in through Comedy Central, along with all of the comedians that are on today. I'm super duper excited. This is the third thing that I'm doing for the day. I woke up at noon, okay, because why are we waking up? Um, I recorded some podcast stuff with my partner, Marie Faustin. I'm actually in her house. I'm not really social distancing because I have um, issues. So um, <laughs> I for her to cook for me because I am a, I'm a queen. Um, but yes, I want to get right into the story because we all need to laugh because we're all going through it. Um, I know you see me and you're like, she's got it together. She's amazing. Look at that bone structure. But I am a criminal. I ended up getting <laughs> I ended up getting arrested at the airport. Can you believe? Yes. Yes, me. Um, this happened a couple years ago. I was on my way to LA because she gets booked because she gets me. And um, I was on my way to LA to shoot a pilot and um, I have issues in the airport because I love makeup and I have a lot of products and I never look at the ounces. I just look at the price and I'd be like, I'm buying that and I'm taking it with me. So they're always stopping me at TSA. They're haters. That's what they do. Um, <laughs> so whenever they stop me, I'm like, oh, it's probably my jar of lotion or like a toner. So I never get stressed out when I see my bag on the other side. But um, I go through and my bags are on the other side and I'm like, <laughs> you know, the regular rigor remote. But all of a sudden I see cops are near my bag. And I was like, well, that's, that's weird. <laughs> Why do they have police for my lotion? Because, uh, you know, I have to stay moisturized. Uh, and so I see my bags and I'm like, yes, those are mine. You know, the suitcase that's falling apart. Yes, that's mine. Um, <laughs> they were like, Yes, is this your purse? And I was like, yes, it is. Um, and I was like, what's in there? You know, what is the issue? My lotion or whatever. And they pull out a police baton. Wow. <laughs> a police baton who's, and I'm not a policeman. <laughs> I, ha I have a police baton because I'm a, I'm a fabulous, famous comedian and I have stalkers and I have to protect myself. And I, I did have mace at one time, but I maced myself. So that's why I get a police baton. Because I can't be trusted. I can't protect my own self. So I had a police baton and they tell me that it's an illegal weapon. And I was like, well, this was a gift. So this is technically not my fault. So I called the person who got me the police baton. It was my girlfriend at the time. Yes, she was taken. I'm on the market now, but I was taken. <laughs> And uh, I call her and I'm like, hey, they're saying that this police baton is an, is an illegal weapon. Um, what do you think is going to happen? She's like, well, they're probably just going to give you a ticket. It's no problem. Don't worry. And they tell me that, no, I'm not getting a ticket, that I'm getting arrested. And I, I start crying. I'm like, they're actually arresting me. And they make me hang up the phone because they're like, you're actually going to need your phone when you get out of here because you're going to have to use it to call someone. So I, I hang up the phone and I'm getting arrested and there's all these people, everybody's watching. And I look like um, a real housewife running errands. Like I had a glamorous coat <laughs> on, I had like a, a matching sweatpant outfit, glamorous hair, sunglasses. So I look like a mule. I look like a drug mule. They <laughs> thought that I had cocaine in my ass, which I did not. I have before, but not that day. That day, <laughs> ass was clean. So. <laughs> People see me getting arrested and they're looking and they're taking video. And another friend of mine was actually going to LA for the same pilot. So there I'm handcuffed and I'm crying. Like my eyes are bawling and everything. And they're, they're walking me. I'm doing the perp walk. Is that what it's called? Well, yeah, before, yeah. before they arrested me, I asked them if I was getting law and ordered and everyone looked like what? But then they were like, yeah, she's, she's getting law and order. They didn't Mirandize me. So just a note, just like law and order, they have to read you your rights and they didn't. Um, so I, my friend sees me getting arrested and I was like, tell them I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it to LA. I said, go without me. And she was looking at me like, bitch, I'm definitely getting on this flight. I was not going to wait for you. 
<laughs> so I'm crying. They call the bus. You know, when they, you hear, call the bus. They call, there was a bus waiting for me to take me to jail. Um, I'm arrested in the back and the policeman was really nice. He was like, you know, they could have let you go. This really wasn't that serious. But um, once they scan a police baton through the x-ray, like that is kind of protocol that you need to get arrested. But they were like, it really wasn't that serious. So they take you to real jail. Um, and there's real people who look like real criminals. Uh, and they put me in a, stall, in a cell by myself. And they take my, la my laces. They take uh, my jewelry. And then I had braids at the time. And they asked me if I could take my braids out. Wow. They asked me, uh, which is very racist. Yeah. And I'm gay, so that's homophobic <laughs> as well. <laughs> they asked me to take my braids out because they thought that I was going to hang myself with my braids. So a lot of emotions going on because I was like, I just got my hair done. Definitely not killing myself. Not today. So I'm in the cell and immediately I turn on like, I was like, I have to be like a privileged white woman. So I start yelling. I was like, excuse me, excuse me. Like I had Pinot Grigio, a glass of Pinot Grigio. I was like, excuse me, I need to use the bathroom. And they're like, the bathroom is in there. And I was like, but that's for real criminals. I'm just like, <laughs> here visiting. Uh, they're like, no, your ass is really in here. So I was in this, I was in jail for four and a half hours. Uh, I took a nap. Um, yep. My, I immediately went into like criminal mode. I, I was like, I'm going to take a nap on the floor. I used the bathroom. My ass was out. Um, almost took a shit. Did not because I'm classy. And before I left, um, one of the people who worked at the jail uh, was like, so what do you do? And I was like, I'm a comedian. And he was like, well, this isn't funny. And laughed. <laughs> this is not the time to do jokes. He's like, oh, you're a comedian? Okay. Well, do you know Chris Stefano? And I was like, yeah, I do. Um, does knowing him get me out of jail quicker? He's like, no, I used to play ball with him. And I was like, oh, so you're a fan and you used to play ball with Chris Stefano. What does that get me? He's like, no, I just wanted to let you know that like, I know him. And I was like, well, I'm still here. So they took my fingerprint, my picture, everything. There was a mug shot. I ended up getting out. I ended up getting on the flight the same day. Um, and I ended up getting able to shoot that pilot that actually went nowhere. So <laughs> look at that. I am a celebrity. I am, I'm black Lindsay Lohan, pretty much. So, all right, well, I got the light. Yeah. Um, you know, my colleagues did not laugh, but you know, I'm doing great. I'm a wonderful host. Uh, but our next comedian is so fabulous. She's definitely a part of the Comedy Central family. We love her. Give it up for Rebecca O'Neill. Hello, we're gonna tell me the apocalypse. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Hi, okay, so before all this popped off, I was trying to get my shit together, which seems like irrelevant right now, because, uh, the, the thing I contributed most to society yesterday is I made edibles with my roommates, uh, my only real friends on earth right now that I can see tangibly. And uh, I came up with an idea to fix this whole thing, which is to like shrink down to the molecular level and fight COVID myself, like magic school bus style. So I'm contributing nothing at this mm -hmm. point. I give up. Uh, but I did have a realization, like I realized we're all on earth, right? And like earth is just this random planet in the universe. And we're all on like this pale blue dot, just like eating each other's asses and catching coronavirus. So I'm like, get your shit together, Rebecca. Like, don't be a part of the problem. So I like realized all my friends I used to think were boring, they've actually just been making like great decisions this whole time. So um, I'm like, don't do that. I was wondering why my life is like love and hip hop. And it's like, you've been making exclusively crazy decisions for the past eight years. The call is coming from inside the thought. You did this to yourself. So I changed everything about my life. I thought my dull friends were dull. They just got impulse control. So now I'm different. I, um, I work out. I stop eating meat. I stop drinking coffee. I cut all my shirts into crop tops. <laughs> I, um, I cut my hair into a bob because I went through a breakup. It felt good at the time. But like when my hair is straight, I look like Dora the Explorer. And when my hair is curly, I look like DW from Arthur. So um, this is a wig. <laughs> this is a fucking wig. Um, that was a bad decision. Uh, I also got off birth control because it was messing my body up. I went to Planned Parenthood. It's, it's a good place. They mean well. And um, this lady 
she shot me up full of Depro Provera, which is the hormone shot. And then after, after is the keyword, after she shot me up full of this shit, she's like, you're going to lose some bone density. And I'm like, no, um, what do you mean by that? Because um, I don't feel like I should have to catch osteoporosis so my boyfriend can shoot up the club. Like, that's anti-feminist. <laughs> right. Like, I shouldn't have to be some chicken nugget ass bitch so he can do cream pies. That's wrong to me. That runs perfectly to my beliefs. And I won't live that way. Like Susan B. Anthony would be pissed. She was not stomping around, starting shit. So a hundred years later, I could be some spineless cum bucket. And that's the way I choose to live. <laughs> so I'm different now. I'm better. I've got, I've been cured of my tragic. I spent all last year in a tragically heterosexual relationship. Oof. And it was my worst quality. I know. I'm doing better now. Um, I'm trying to figure out how gay I am. And I don't know. Like, I don't want to involve Kenzie because he seems like he was like an old pervert. Just like including math and sex, that's not right. Uh, so, in my everyday life, I try to figure out how gay I am, and I'm in my gayest when I see like a, a woman of color driving like a heavy municipal vehicle, like a garbage truck or a street sweeper or some shit. I'm just it's sexual for me. So, um, yeah. I, I also, <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out how to be woke and nasty at the same time because it confuses straight men, and that's my brand in the apocalypse. I just want to. Be like, <laughs> The Andy Kaufman of sluts, and it's working. It's going all right. I'm gonna open an OnlyFans in two business weeks. Um, you got one more minute, Becca. One more minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's the light. Okay, so this holds over. This is from the before times and now. My favorite activity till till I die is to smoke weed and watch science fiction movies at the same time. Uh, so I was smoking one day and. I saw this movie on, this is back when cable was real. Um, this movie on was like a couple channels down in the TV guide and it was called Yo Robot. And I'm like, great, this is gonna be dope. Post-apocalypse, relevant, like dystopia instantly. So I'm like expecting dirty teenagers forced into categories, oppressed, you know, Yo Robot, protect me, sepia tones, all that shit. And then I, I turned to Yo Robot, like ready to watch this movie super high. Cause I'm smoking sativa, like thank you man, it's marijuana. I got like thoughts and ideas and shit. Um, <laughs> I turned I turn this movie, like, ready to watch it, and uh, your robot turns out to be I robot in Spanish. And I'm like, uh, absolutely, <laughs> like, for sure. It's like Will Smith and everything, same movie. Top to bottom, and, you know, who could have seen that coming is all I'm saying. You know, not, not I, not yo. Uh, not Rebecca O'Neill. But you guys, if I am out of here, peace and love. Thank you, Thank Rebecca. You. Yo, robot, the queen. Robot, always and forever. <laughs> Did wait one before we leave? Uh, did Will Smith look the same? It was literally the same movie. No, it was it was I Robot uh, dubbed over in Spanish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. Exact okay. same movie. Yeah. Not the same movie. Got you. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, I would have been just like you, and I'm sober. So look at that. <laughs> it, it can happen to anybody. <laughs> it, can happen to, it can happen to anybody. Uh, give it up for Rebecca O'Neill one more time. <laughs> that was great. Uh, this is really making me feel better as a person because yeah. um, we're doing this together. Uh, but our next comedian, straight from Chicago, but now residing in LA, yes? One of my favorites. Give it up for Clark Jones. Hey, what's up, everybody? Clark, you have a mic around your neck. What is going on? Well, I got to turn it on. Oh, oh, you're going to oh, use it. it. <laughs> Okay, not going to mute you. Keep it going. Give it up for Clark. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Come on, that rain roof. I'm sorry, everybody. This pullover is not flattering. <laughs> I look like I'm trying to sneak back into America. Like, what do you mean? It's red <laughs> Uh It's tough being single during this thing, man. Like, I try to keep a good attitude. I'm single, but I got a positive outlook. I still believe in soulmates, you know? There's somebody in the background. <laughs> I'm sorry. Believe, sorry. <laughs> over FaceTime, over video chat, and you out there for somebody. I believe in soulmates, but I also believe that person may already be dead, right? Or quarantined. They don't give up. They just didn't pay their Wi-Fi bill. But they out oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in it. Like, don't give up, man. Because if they dead or if they quarantined, and this is kind of dark. <laughs> the first person you meet after the quarantine, you got fucked immediately because your soulmate is dead. <laughs> is this thing on? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yes, sir, cold, but McDonald's french fries and that ass, you gotta eat that hot. <laughs> French out the grease. Eat it like you ate butt in however long this thing lasted. <laughs> Salt to taste. <laughs> Salt to Welcome taste. tags, Clark. <laughs> Salt to taste. I learned that I'm dying to drive in some dives. <laughs> I've been watching, I've been marathoning Food Network and SVU, because that's your only options. You, you, can't, you can't watch anything else. I love guys attitude because he goes to the hood with frosted tips and that deserves some <laughs> who else doing that <laughs> you went to a soul food restaurant asking an old black lady for recipes that's never been done before <laughs> especially from a racially ambiguous white man right he asked <laughs> a soul food proprietor in st louis what she puts in a baked mac and cheese very bad guy theory impression oh we hear it sweetie pies with Sweetie Pie herself, and it's big mac and cheese, so delicious. Sweetie Pie, what the fuck? He didn't curse, but he had the energy of somebody cursing. And she tried to play with it. She was like, oh, I put a cup of box of bell in there. I'm sweating like a Detroit comedian. Yeah, you got the one, you got one minute left, Clark. <laughs> Somebody give me a towel. You're doing great, you're doing great. <laughs> this Kevin Hart presents hot as hell. <laughs> Wait a minute, he up in Sweetie Pie's? He asked for recipes. I'm like, hey, no. She was like, uh, oh, I could put a couple boxes of milk meat in there and a couple, uh, couple of reduction uh, cheeses. Then she got real black. <laughs> she was like, I top it off with a whole thing of milk. And everyone was like, a thing of milk? How much is that? But since it's Food Network, they had to put thang on TV. T-H-A-N-G. It was <laughs> All of a sudden, my TV switched to the BT Network. It was awesome. <laughs> Pouring a thing of milk. They went to pouring that thing. I'm like, damn, sweetie pie. I don't know how much a thing is, but it's at least three commercials. <laughs> That's how much a thing is. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I don't have kids or whatever, as you can probably tell, because I always wear camouflage pants. But uh, I, I always, I never felt like I was financially ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to have that first kid till you financially ready. But I feel like you're not supposed to be with the first kid. The first kid is like a test drive, a test run. Like, if you're the oldest and you got like two or three siblings, all your baby pictures are in places you don't recognize. <laughs> it was like the struggle apartment. Like, man, what Christmas was this? It was like, oh, that's when we lived in a U-Haul. You know, we didn't lock the doors and didn't sign the contract. So we are just, you still doing like, that, Yuri? <laughs> so like, good. I just yeah. Well, I, I lit you two minutes ago, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my mic. I dare you. Please come say <laughs> Give it up for Clark Jones, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, this is such a short show. We're so sorry. We, were, we really wanted more. Maybe next time. Maybe next um, time. <laughs> you an artist. <laughs> um, this is wonderful. We're really having a blast here. Everybody's sweating. It's amazing. <laughs> but we have to wrap up our show with our last comedians. It's a duo. Not really a duo. I guess, will we call them a duo? No, they're not a duo. They're just married. <laughs> they're, just, they're just married comedians. Uh, give it up for Will Miles and Julia Rozzi Miles. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Well, that's what happens in a quarantine. You be, you become a duo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I see, we both here, right? <laughs> I mean, we may as well do this together. Yeah. You know. Julia, do you have do you have the last name Miles? Is it is it hyphenated? Um, no, it's wrong. No. Oh, oops. Oh, Sorry, Will. Actually, it's just. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> no. You not. see this shit? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been. Honestly, we haven't, we didn't go on a honeymoon yet, and here we are, you know, yeah, it's, this it's is happening. It. <laughs> it was chosen for us. In the lap of luxury, baby. Yeah, <laughs> it's been really great. Um, also, I'm pregnant, so if this Ooh. doesn't get figured out yeah. by July, Ooh. I'm going to have to do a home birth, and as a stoner, I really wanted those hospital drugs. Yeah. I really <laughs> have been so excited to get an epidural, and now I'm like, <laughs> I don't even have a bathtub that's clean. Oh. 
She hasn't been smoking in months. Well, since the baby. But obviously. this guy. I'm proud, well, I'm proud of you. Good I for know, right? you. Are not smoking me while being pregnant. Yeah, yeah and being married to me. That's yeah. Going to lie, Julia. A pillar of our community. Oh man. <laughs> You thought Will smoked weed regular. Lockdown Will, I'm smoking nonstop. He's like, I gotta go get supplies. And I'm like, ooh, food, uh, toilet paper. He's like, a joint, edibles, <laughs> like all these yeah. things. And I'm like, cool. Yeah, I stocked up day one. Yeah. Stocked up? <laughs> I stocked up. <laughs> On weed, okay, got it. <laughs> and toilet paper, but uh, weed was also prior to the toilet paper. But yeah. <laughs> As two lactose intolerant married people, toilet paper was very big concern oh, wow. before and after the apocalypse. And we can't stress enough, we got a bidet. We have a bidet. Ago, maybe a year ago. Get a bidet. The best thing in the world. Clean that ass. Yeah. Clean that front. Clean whatever you yeah. want. And the, uh, and the reason that Martin got banned from SNL, wash your ass. And uh, <laughs> that's what. <laughs> he was looking toward the future. Yeah, he was. Who he was knew? Like, <laughs> Martin Lawrence was a wise psychic sage that would know to clean yo ass. <laughs> oh, I love that. Wash um, your ass. I didn't know. What have you been uh what have you been up to? Also, I've been uh, you know, feverishly studying YouTube clips of how to fade yourself up. Mm -hmm. wow. That's every black man in America, probably everybody in America right now is looking how to fade yourself up. I did look that up. Did uh, you do it? I haven't done it yet. I'm oh, in the okay. <laughs> research phase. <laughs> I have to, wow. Is that figure out. Already? <laughs> Interesting videos come up when you type in fade yourself up. I saw a dude try to beat his own ass. Of how much body hair I can grow. Like I knew I could grow a lot, but like I have like nipple hair and it, it's like an aerial a scarf my mother knitted me and uh will went to grab my milk cities the other day and was like ah cactus you know and i just feel like we're really getting closer yeah we have no choice there's only us two here and the dog and uh and so <laughs> so i'm gonna do a set yeah the dog's got 10 minutes ah, on, what's uh... the deal with not having any thoughts <laughs> <laughs> It's tough to get kibble in the apocalypse, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You okay. guys are made for each other. <laughs> Here's something fun. So yesterday, I hear my almost 37-year-old husband on a business call going, yeah, things are good. I'm picking up skateboarding. I got no. a skateboard outside. I can't judge you. I Thank can't you. judge you. <laughs> Can you cut off her? <laughs> can't get on the train and stuff. So that's what every woman wants her husband to start doing when he's past the age of thirty-five: is picking up skateboarding. <laughs> In a pandemic, that's the top five things you should know how to do. You should definitely. Hey, we're gonna all need to skateboard when no. the time comes. Nope. You know? <laughs> no. We've been watching. Um, we've been watching a lot of HGTV, which I love HGTV, especially yeah. living in LA or New York, because it's always like middle of the country. Uh, people go to a house. They're like, okay, it's eight bedrooms, uh, fourteen bathrooms, only a hundred dollars. And then like the girl walking through the house is like, but I wanted a red door, and the door is blue. And you're like, paint it, bitch! Like it's so infuriating. Meanwhile, in LA. We'll go look at a house and they're like, okay, it's $3 million. Um, yeah. There's no walls, but you can sleep under the avocado tree. And you're like, what? Like, this is <laughs> insane. You guys got one minute. One minute? Ooh. I ain't got shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done that's annoying? You've never uh, done that. What have you done? She does uh, the social distancing thing where she'll mainly talk to me from the other room. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an Italian thing. My mom and dad do that. Like, they'll be in the room together and not speak, and then they'll go in the other room. My mom will be like, hey, did you ever do that yeah. thing? That's every day here, is I'll, I'll be in bed, <laughs> and then I'll hear, do you want breakfast? And that's normal, I guess, you know? No, we want breakfast. But then also, just, I'll be watching TV, and I'll hear from the other room, what, what was today like? And it's like, first of all, you know what today was like. <laughs> We've only been with each other. <laughs> Can you believe that he's doing oh, my wife jokes when I'm offering him breakfast? I am offering him breakfast. That feels on brand. You know when your wife is offering breakfast. 
He doesn't understand us ladies. <laughs> <Take more. laughs> 14 day quarantine, that's not enough time, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> also keep rapping. I don't you know, know how jolly you're... Will is. He's like the happiest person. <laughs> oh, please, Will. So when I first started dating Will, he was like a cute hypochondriac, like behind the scenes. Yeah. Everyone's like, Will's so cool. And I'm like, mm, you should see him in private with someone he trusts. And so he's like a, like a cute hypochondriac. And in the last few weeks, I'm like, holy shit. Like he could be head of CDC. Like he that is insane. He literally picks up mail with his foot. And then, like, kicks it and says we can't open it for two days because it needs to um, clean. Got to get that right. corona. You know? <laughs> corona don't come off. Thank you guys so much. That was so incredible. Give it up ah! for Julia Rossi. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching the Comedy Central stand-up featuring Becca O'Neill, Clark Jones, Will Miles, Julia Rossi, and Sydney Washington. Please tune in when we do this again. You know, this was the first go round. So we, you know, we had to see what it was. It feels like it could be a hit. So <laughs> make sure you follow everybody that you've seen, especially me. And thanks so much for watching. You ain't got shit else to watch. <laughs>